So I met my ex at the Whole Foods. Um, it was organic. <laughs> I know. So anyway, uh, you know, I was at the hot food bar. I go there basically every damn day. I'm there. I just love the food there, and I'm there, and I catch eyes with this smoke show. She is hot, right? And she looks at me, and she smiles. That does not happen where I am from. In my neighborhood, women don't go smiling at men like that. It just, it just doesn't really happen. So I'm like, damn, I should talk to her, right? I'm thinking about it. So I go, I'm you know, digging through my food, and then she comes up right beside me and starts taking from the little you know, food thing over here. I'm like, I really should talk to her. So I look down and I say, oh, that looks good. And she says, yeah, it does. I was so smooth. <laughs> I was so smooth. And so I'm like, okay, I really, really should talk to her. So then I walk over to the checkout, self-checkout. I, I buy my food. I look back over. She's kind of, you know, toiling around or whatever. I'm like, I got to go talk to her. So I buy my food, and I walk out of the store, and I get in my car, and I drive away. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I get about a half mile down the road, and something hits me. Turn the fuck around. So I do. I buck a U-turn, I drive back. As I'm looking for a parking spot, I see her come out of the store, out of the Whole Foods, and sit down at one of the little tables, right? So I park, I kind of go through the store like I, like I was you know, still in there. I, I come out the side door and I see her and I'm like, oh, hey, you know I'm full of shit because I don't say, oh, hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, hey, uh, so was it as good as we thought it looked? And she said, oh, yeah, I crushed it. So we start talking, and it was, it was such a great chat. I mean, her and I were just vibing, right? We exchange information, and from then on, we are off to the races. I mean, every day that week, we were together, going on dates, chilling, hanging out. I remember dropping her home at 5.30 a.m. one night because we were just listening to music, talking, and vibing the whole thing. It was magical, I'm not going to lie to you, until... She started hoisting up red flags <laughs> like a motherfucker. Tonight, I'm going to share with you three. I, I counted them up one day, and I got to like 20, and I just quit. But I'm going to give you three. And these three I call the trifecta of insecurity. Red flag the first. Weeks into the relationship, she wanted my phone passcode. Now, I understand, you know, married couples and people down the line or everything like that, you know, share all that. But weeks into the relationship, you're asking for my phone passcode. And I don't know about you guys, but my cybersecurity profile is abysmal. Like, my phone passcode is my house alarm passcode. It's my ATM pin. If you got my phone passcode, you own my life. And she wanted it off the break. Not to mention... The things that people text me, I have friends that send me personal shit. She shouldn't have access to that. Do you know the things that Betty Smithsonian texts me? <laughs> it's absurd. That was the first red flag. Red flag the second. She wanted me to proactively reach out to women I used to talk to and date to let them know that I was no longer on the market. Proactively. Can you imagine what that would be like? Imagine me picking up the phone like, hey, uh, it, it's Chris. <laughs> Lundy, uh, Chris Lundy, yeah. We used to, um, we used to do sex. Uh, uh, what, oh, I'm interrupting dinner, sorry about that. Uh, you, oh, is that your boyfriend in the, oh, fiance, got it. Fiance in the back. Uh, just wanna let you know, I, no, don't put him on the phone. I don't need to, hey, hey man, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> no, no, I was actually calling with good news, I am. I am off the market, <laughs> and congrats on your wedding uh, soon to come. Anyway, it was, it was so stupid. I'm like, okay, now I'm really starting to feel like I'm in, I'm in La La Land. Like, who exactly am I dating? And keep in mind, you know, in stores, you usually start with the two milder ones to get to the third. Red flag the third. Yeah. I was at, pulling into the same Whole Foods that I met her at. Like I said, I go there all the time. I'm driving up, looking for a parking spot, and I see my ex-ex <laughs> parking her car, getting out, and walking into the store. So I park my car, and I walk into the Whole Foods. We run into each other. We chat for just a little bit. Keep in mind, she is married and eight months pregnant. I'm talking about she's about to pop at any minute now, right? So, you know, I wish her you know, congratulations. I find out she's having a boy. All good. I wish her all the best. 
I'm a transparent boyfriend. So later that night, I tell my ex, hey, you know, I ran into my ex at the store, you know, just a short chat, no big deal. And she says to me, why'd you go in? Why'd you go in to the store? To the Whole Foods, because I was fucking hungry. I didn't even understand the question. What am I supposed to do, like, only DoorDash? And even then, what if a cute girl delivers my food? Am I going to be like, back away, drop the food there, back away from the door? I, it, just, it, it made absolutely no sense. And here's the kicker. When we were breaking up, one of the things that she said she didn't like about me, the thing she really didn't like, is that I was controlling. Thank you. What? It, it, to me, it would be like Jeffrey Dahmer breaking up with you because you like an occasional steak. You know what I mean? It just didn't make any sense at all. But thank God I got away. Thank God I dodged that bullet. And you know, any relationship, when it ends, you, you always learn something. You always take a lesson away from it. And what I learned from that is never turn around. Never make a U-turn. When you're on the road, keep fucking going because you could end up dating a crazy-ass person like I did. Thank you. Thank you.